Hello, it's Meg again, and today we're here to look at the chemistry add-on for Minecraft Education Edition. This is a feature that's only in Education Edition, and it's quite new, so let's get to it. Um, this is just an introduction to what's new in the chemistry add-on and what you can do. So in the chemistry add-on, there are four new sort of crafting table-esque blocks that you can do uh, that you can use to do chemistry. So if we look at um, the very first one here, which has a microscope on the side um, and some other funky looking science equipment, and I right click, we open the element constructor. And it's just like the name says, it's pretty self-explanatory. The element constructor can help you make elements from the periodic table. To do this, you just need to click on the plus or minuses over here on the left, or you can drag the sliders. And what that does is helps you start to create an atom. And the P or plus is for number of protons. You'll notice that the protons are going in the middle of the picture there because the protons live in the nucleus. So let's start with something very small and easy like helium. Uh, and then N is for neutrons. Neutrons don't have a charge. That's why the yellow uh, yellow circle doesn't have a plus or a minus in it. And they sit also in the nucleus next to the protons. Now the element constructor only lets you create stable isotopes. So if you have a combination that isn't a stable isotope in real life, which means uh, isotope means you have the, a good number of good mix of protons, electrons and neutrons. So if you don't have the right mix, you'll just see a question mark here on the right, which means I, I'm not going to create anything. But if I change the last one here, my number of electrons, electrons have a negative charge and are found in an outer shell of our atom. You'll see once I get the right combination, suddenly a element block will appear in the bottom right here. So I have the combination two, 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 two protons and the number of protons will determine what element you are going to get essentially is helium. Now, if I left click on that, I can create as many heliums or helium blocks as I want. Now, obviously in creative mode, uh, we can construct our elements or grab our elements straight from our menu as well. So if I open up my inventory with E, click on the search bar and type in helium, oops, I can also grab the helium blocks from there. But obviously that is only going to work in creative mode. So if you're in survival or adventure, your, uh, you or your students will need to use the element constructor. Um, and it's good because also with the electrons, if you're looking at electron shell configurations, which is something you touch on in high school chemistry, you'll notice as you start to fill the shells up, it does um, fill up correctly according to what we know about electrons. So the inner shell uh, fits two electrons and the next few shells usually fit eight. Uh, so it is um, accurate in that sense, um, but like I said, it only makes stable isotopes. So if you're talking with students about isotopes, which again is probably more high school, um, it won't make uh, unstable isotopes or just anything. Um, so that is number one, the element constructor. Moving on to Number two, the compound creator. Again, the name says it all. This block is about creating compounds. So in chemistry, a compound is when you have two different elements joining together to make one bigger molecule. And if you have two different elements joining together, it is called a compound. Now, just like with the element constructor, if I put in the wrong ratio of compounds, nothing will happen. So if we look at a compound that most students will know the chemical formula for, water, which is H2O, what that is telling us is that we need two hydrogens and one oxygen. So if I put in one oxygen and where's my hydrogen? Here we go. 64 hydrogens. <laughs> nothing is appearing in my sort of result box here. Now, this is one of the issues with using the elements and the chemistry add-on is that stack of, that maximum stack of 64 items. So a quick and easy way to just place 
one is to when you're holding the big block of 64 or whatever it might be just right click on the square where you want to place it and it will just place one one block down for you um, another thing you can do is by right clicking on your stack it will halve the stack for you um, so I still have the wrong ratio I have one hydrogen and I need two so I'll just put another one in there and you can see as soon as I have the right ratio it is showing me that I can create something with my H2 well my two hydrogens and one oxygen so here I can create water now this might not seem very exciting because you can already get water normally in um, regular Minecraft by grabbing a bucket and just pulling it out of the river or lake um, but sometimes you you may need to make other other compounds for example if I want to make latex to make a helium balloon latex is made from carbon and hydrogen now if you don't know the chemical compound for latex that's fine because you can just ask Google <laughs> so uh, all of the chemical compounds in here are accurate so whatever Google tells you the com chemical formula for um, latex is it will be the same in Minecraft so uh, latex is uh, five carbons and eight hydrogens so I'm just right clicking eight and five times to get down the right number so you can see here it's got our chemical formula C with a little five down the bottom here and H with the little eight and I've made some latex so I'm going to grab some of this so I can make some balloons and uh, you'll see this isn't really being used up so I can just keep making as much latex as I like now the one downside I guess to the chemistry add-on is if I go into my inventory I am in creative mode but if I search for latex whoops it does not come up so the one thing I guess you need to keep in mind with crafting things in the chemistry add-on is if you want to um, if you need a compound uh, you will need to actually go to the compound creator table to create it even in creative mode you're not going to be able to access those compounds directly from the items menu and this is as of the end of 2019 um, that feature is they just don't appear in the item menu so that is the only way to get some of these items if you want a list of these items and what's possible I have put a link to a PDF which is the Minecraft lab journal which has a list of everything that you can make in it uh, at the bottom of the description for this video all right we're on to the third third block here so this one is our lab table so the lab table only has a limited number of um, successful I guess reactions that it can do check in the Minecraft PDF lab journal for a list of those uh, experiments or, or reactions one example is making super fertilizer with ammonia and oh, just put one in there and phosphorus where did I put my phosphorus there we go um, and you'll see I'm getting a animation on one of the uh, images up the top here which suggests that I'm probably onto a winning combination so now if I click combine hopefully I won't get trash <laughs> or garbage and in actual fact I got a bag of super fertilizer so you will need to look at the lab journal to see what are the possibilities I believe the other ones you can create are ice bombs and heat blocks and things like that now onto the fourth block that comes with chemistry the chemistry add-on is the material reducer again does what the name says if you put um, an object or an item or a block you have collected from around the Minecraft world into the material reducer it will reduce it down into its component elements not all blocks will work now you can see if I try and put the garbage in here it's not letting me put it in so if it won't let you put the item in it means it can't reduce it down so let's try something else if I put the super fertilizer in you can see it's decomposing it or reducing it back into its components the phosphorus and the ammonia uh, if I put the grass block in which perhaps I've just dug up uh, from the world around me you can see it's breaking it down into carbon oxygen more oxygen nitrogen and phosphorus 
So it's a really good tool for exploring what blocks are made of what elements. So when students are first learning about atoms and elements and how they make up the whole world around them, it can be a little confusing because you can't see them with your eyes. So to be able to put different um, blocks in here and decompose them, it helps them play with the idea that um, perhaps blocks are made of something smaller, even smaller building blocks that we can't see. So in looking at the iron ore, it shouldn't be surprising to see that we are getting out the element iron uh, and we're also getting some silicon and oxygen. So these do reflect what are, what elements actually are in real life, iron ore. And then I can pull them out like this and destroy the iron ore block that I had put in. So in survival or adventure mode, this is the second way to access the elemental blocks by putting in a block up the top and deconstructing it down into its Sub, uh, is component elements. So they are our four major additions to Minecraft through the chemistry add-on. So you've got the element constructor, the compound creator, the lab table and the material reducer. Now there is a, just a few more cool things I'd like to show you. Beyond those four things we do have some extra patterns unlocked on the crafting table. So using some of the elements and things that we have created, we can craft some really cool things. Uh, for example, one of the things we can make with our latex is a helium balloon. Again, the patterns are in the PDF lab journal if you'd like to see them. So the PDF, PDF balloon, helium balloon is uh, six beakers of latex. We put in a lead down the very bottom. We have to put a color, we'll put start with red at the top, and then in the middle we put helium. And you can see I have a successful pattern, so the, the product appears on the right. Uh, now I've only made one helium balloon, but you can attach balloons to fences. They do exert some lift, so you can, let's see if one balloon is enough to lift a pig. Yes, probably not in real life. Uh, you can also, oh, bye-bye pig, <laughs> into the sun. You can also shoot balloons with arrows, so you could make some really cool mini games, um, looking at shooting balloons with arrows and things like that. And I can make different colored balloons and, and all sorts. Uh, another, probably my favorite thing that you can make with the chemistry add-on is colored torches. One of my favorite experiments to do in the science classroom is the colored flames experiment with where you spray different compounds into the Bunsen burner and you see what color the flame turns. Well, Minecraft has its own version of that with its colored torches. So uh, first I do need to create some compounds. So the compounds I'm gonna create, uh, I didn't know the ratio of all of them, so I did Google some of them. Uh, the first one is calcium chloride, which is just one to one. Um, the just throw that out there. The second one I want is mercuric chloride, which is mercury and chloride, and that was probably need to go and grab the mercury. Now mercury is one of the ones with a weird symbol for its name. It's HG, not the M that you'd probably expect. Uh, so mercuric chloride was HGCO2. Um, let's just start with those two and see what colors we get. So for our colored torches, uh, all you need to do for crafting is put the chemical or compound that you're after up the top and a stick, which I also don't have. a stick. So where'd my compound? Oh, there it is. Potassium chloride and a stick. No, I need a torch. No, not redstone, regular. So all you need to do to make your colored torches is uh, access the crafting table, put a regular torch down the bottom and your compound that you'd like to burn above it. So if we go start with potassium chloride, you can see now I have some purple torches. And 
let's check out mercuric chloride. Oops, right click, put our mercuric chloride up the top and our regular torch down the bottom. We get some red, red torches. You can also make colored sparklers. Uh, they burn in your hand, but once, they're, once they've burnt out, they disappear. You can make underwater torches using magnesium and a torch. You can also make underwater TNT. So that's it for the summary of the Minecraft chemistry add-on. I hope you have found something new that you'd like to go and create. There is so much good chemistry to explore through this add-on all the way through to the high school level stuff. So I, I thoroughly recommend you check out the Minecraft Chemistry Lab Journal PDF. It has a list of all the possible things you can create with this new add-on. Just keep in mind that if you need a specific compound and it's not appearing in the menu when you search for it in creative mode, you will need to use the compound creator table. This is Meg. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments.